How's everyone doing? We're back again doing a new set of podcasts, not for the Asian Cup, like you, like we did for the World Cup. Uh, today we're gonna we're going to preview and discuss how Iran will do in Australia, where the Asian Cup is going to be held in uh, ten days or nine days by now. Um, we're back again with two regular panelists panelists from the World Cup who created and helped me with this project. Ball back goalies and seeing nice on me on. How you guys doing? I'm good. I'm good. I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and I'm looking forward to having a few minutes talking about uh, our prospects. Thank you, Bobak. How you doing, Cena? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. It's uh, great to, to speak to you guys again. Yeah, thank you. And I just want to thank you guys for helping me making this project. It's always great to you guys have you on, and uh, and uh, for the viewers. And I hope you guys enjoyed the rants we're gonna have about the Asian Cup. And to in today's guest, we have uh, Pejman, all the way from Sweden. He runs his own account. How you doing, Pejman? Fine, nice to talk to you guys. Pasha, Bob, I can see now. Thank you very much. Thank you for having you on. And then towards the end of this podcast, um, I'll, set you, I'll tell you guys your Twitter names and stuff so the viewers, if they want to get in contact. But um, the first discussion topic that I want to talk about is our preparation for the Asian Cup. As we know, it took, you know, the Fed, IFF, the Iranian Fed, Football Federation, it took them four months to sign Kairos from post-World Cup. Now, my first question to you guys is, I'm going to start off with Cena. Was that worth it, though? You know, because at that time, we could have, you know, set up camps, done some friendly matches that we're lacking in. We'll discuss that later. Um, what do you guys think, Cena, about the four months that we wasted on this? Well, I mean, four months is a, is a great, I mean, it's a huge time to be, um, to be spent on just uh, renewing uh, the contract of a manager who's been there for almost three and four years now. Um, yeah, as you said, in that in that time, um, there could have been a few friendlies or a few training camps um, sorted. Um, I mean, I remember the Portugal camp was uh, supposed to be um, organised at, at a much earlier date, but um, because of the uh, the contract talks, it didn't happen on time. I mean, um, one of the reasons for the delay was uh, they weren't sure if uh, Kairos deserved to stay because they didn't really think the uh, results that we got at the World Cup was uh, was great or not and that was a there was a argument between the IFF and the uh, sports ministry which got solved at the end and then there was a problem of uh, the compensation which um, Kairos was asking for in case um, he you know he was ever going to be relieved of his uh, of his duties so yeah that took a that took a lot of time as well but yeah certainly I think in, in terms of getting friendlies sorted and, uh, and a couple of uh, training camps it, it did um, it did cost us a bit but it's mo- most of all I think it was confusion of uh, where we'll be we'll be heading if Kairos wasn't there you know there was a few names considered and, and, and you know rumored to have been uh, spoken to but uh, it's at the end it's, it's great to have him uh, you know yeah. in charge for, for at least two or three years or at least till the uh, next World Cup anyway Peshman, what are your thoughts? Do you want to add anything to what Sina just said? Uh, ju- just shortly, I mean, uh, one of the most important things for uh, for keeping Kairos is that uh, the squad actually wanted him and uh, they had faith in him. So if, if the important players like Neko and uh, all the others didn't have faith in him, they, they would probably get rid of him much easier, much uh, sooner. Uh, so I think the impact of the... Uh, Players wanting to keep him uh, made a big difference. Exactly. Bobak? I think the guys uh, covered everything except just I would like to just add one thing, which is mm-hmm. Sina says we wasted four months in the sense that we could have been doing the tra- arranging training camps or friendly matches. I don't think so. I think even if we signed Kirosh. Uh, right after the World Cup, we wouldn't have had any training cramp and we wouldn't have any friendlies either because we've seen what's happened since then as well. Yeah. And over the last few years, the IFS has, has been at its worst when it comes to competence and uh, organization. So it, it, for me, it was just a matter of are we going to keep him or not? And who is going to take us forward? And I would rather have uh, Carlos Kerosh at the helm um, not really as much for this Asian Cup because I don't have such high expectations. I'm sure that will change when the ball is kicked for the first time. But uh, I'm thinking more about post-Asian Cup and who is going to rebuild the national team. And I would rather and I would hope that he remains somehow at the helm after this tournament and uh, he's going to be the man who uh, rebuilds the national team. 
Thank you. Thank you guys for your input. Now, my uh, second question to you guys is, you know, looking at the amount of friendlies we've had, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, according to FIFA, we're ranked number one in Asia, but we all know that, you know, FIFA, you know, it's all, it just baffles, you know, it doesn't really make sense, you know, it's, the, the rankings don't really actually portray what Iran is actually doing. Uh, my, my question to you guys is, is that looking at the Asian teams, now, the top teams, Australia, ever since the uh, World Cup has had five friendlies, Japan has six, South Korea has six, in our group, Bahrain has had nine, UAE 13, and Qatar has had 14. And these are including the golf games. Now, what does that say for Iran uh, compared to these? Are we, we, it obviously shows you're very unprepared. But uh, coming back to you, Bobak, is um, what does this say about the Federation and uh, how are we going to go into playing our first game against Bahrain on January 11? Look, uh, I know from a very close source to the situation that even for the World Cup, Carlos Quiroz made personal trips to the hotels, to the training camps, even goes as far as booking tickets for the players. That's not what a team manager should be doing. That's what a federation is supposed to be exactly. doing. So his responsibilities are far more than uh, just a manager. He actually takes it in his own hand because he knows he will be let down by other people. So uh, in terms of preparation, that tells us we're very underprepared, but we're depending on the tactical uh, uh, plans of the manager to be able to overcome some of our opponents. I mean, that was always going to be the case, uh, uh, knowing our uh, deficiencies. I don't think anyone really expected things to change after the World Cup. The approach was always going to be the same. The question was, who is going to deal with these uh, with this handicap situation? And uh, going into the Asian Cup, personally, I'm no uh, more worried or less worried than I would have been if we had played three or four friendlies. I have faith in uh, Carlos Quiroz, uh, but at the same time, he's got an exit. Uh, he's got a get out of jail free card he can always point out we don't have any friendlies it took them four months same uh, arguments that you gave us so that's a shame that our football is clouded in uh, uncertainty right now yeah. Pejman anything you'd like to add? Um, I do agree that the uh, amount of friendlies aren't that important I don't know how much better like Bahrain and Qatar and all have got playing like uh, 5, 9, 13 friends and so uh, but what I think is important uh, is that uh, uh, the, the federation al always lacks of uh, thinking like one, two, three years in in uh, uh, in the future, which makes uh, just as you guys said that uh, Kairos have to do all these weird things that it's not up to the uh, not up to a manager. So I don't know if the amount of friendlies matter. We need a structural change, and that's not something that takes four months or, or a year. That's take, that takes a long time. I think we'll be dead by then. Um, <laughs> Sina, what are your thoughts, buddy? Well, I think if um, if you want any positives uh, from this current situation or the uncertainty, as Bobak called it, is that the other top uh, two or three Asian teams also have had their problems of their own. Not problems, but they've been going through some changes of their own. I mean, Australia is bringing out a, a new generation of, of players, which we saw uh, parts of in the World Cup. Um, you know, they, they're the hosts and uh, they'll always be favourites. Japan's the same. They had a disappointing tournament at the World Cup, change of manager. Things haven't gone quite as, as good as they wanted it to since, uh, since the new appointment. And it's the same uh, same story for South Korea as well. So you could say there's also a little bit of uncertainty in the other teams. Saudi Arabia is the same. They just sacked their manager after the Gulf Cup. Um, a Romanian manager has uh, took charge, and today they lost 4-1 uh, to Bahrain, who is supposedly our uh, weakest opponent in our group. So, um, you know, in, in, that, in, in those terms, I think um, if, you want, if you want something to look forward to or to have a bit of uh, hope, then that's uh, that's something to look at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, can, yeah, also one can I thing. just add? Yeah, yeah sure. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, just one more thing that uh, Australia, Australia also reminds a little bit about uh, IFF because their last uh, league game actually ended yesterday. And on their first uh, uh, team gathering, there were only 11 players out of 22 or 23 or whatever it was supposed to be. Uh, and it's like less than two weeks to the Asian Cup. And uh, it's it's kind of an amateur way of uh, dealing with the 
Asian Cup and dealing with the national team that can uh, backfire. Uh, Bob back. Yeah, I just wanted to add that there's a couple of things that make me actually say the uh, say that I'm not as worried. It's because first of all, we're playing in the short term or we're planning in the short term. So Carlos Quiroz is not building a team for the future right now. That's number one. That meant that the starting lineup and the key players were always going to be the same core. So we already know who those guys are. And on the second uh, on the second side, tactically, that's the second reason why people will play friendlies to figure out new players that can come in or tactics. Tactically, I think it's dead certain how we're going to play as well. So in that sense, on the field, we didn't have as many uncertain questions uh, or question marks over our situation as other teams do. Things have been clear for us, for better or for worse. I mean, it's uh, it's yet to be seen whether that is in our interest or not. So things were clear, but it's unfortunate that the players cannot practice more together, the players cannot uh, get more used to each other, etc. So other people will be more in line with each other's ideas. Definitely. But it's, can I just add one more thing as well? Yes, you know, talking go ahead. Of, uh, talking of tactics, I think Bobak is absolutely right, and I think one of uh, the main issues that Kairos probably would have wanted uh, to sort out in these friendlies, if they would have happened, was to find a plan B, which I don't think we've had for the past year. I think it was something that we really lacked in the World Cup as well, and I was uh, really looking forward to him finding a plan B to this um, tactic that we currently play. Do you really think we have? Uh, uh, Plan B. Do you think that this squad? I mean, no. we're looking from the outside, and we can definitely see there's a lot of deficiencies to this squad and this the capabilities, whether it's pace or technique, etc. Do you really think that? Uh, I mean, something feasible. I mean, do you really yeah, think there is that's, something? That's out my there? point. There, there is, there is, there is none at the moment, apart from Sadar Osman, who I think is our only Plan B. But I think even even the but that's just the individual player. But I think in terms of tactics. K Rush was a, mm. would have probably wanted to sort something out as a oh, player, yeah. and, and 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 we don't yeah. have that at the moment, and we didn't have that in the World Cup as well. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, definitely. Now, um, I'm gonna talk about, um, you know, we just had basically one friendly against South Korea, and as we know, the Palestine uh, friendly got canceled in a very very short notice. Even K Rush publicly said that they should get fined for it. But besides that point, I think the only positive thing was for our homegrown players that they went to um, South Africa camp, and I think the only foreign player, Iranian player that plays in a foreign country was Sadar Azun that got invited. And um, starting with you, Sina, um, this is there's a lot of positives obviously from this. But uh, what were your thoughts on this? So we played against three friendly clubs. And uh, we won every single one, and uh, we've actually scored with a margin of two goals. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was also the friendlies against uh, Mozambique and Kenya as well, which um, were cancelled. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, yeah, you can add that to the list as exactly. well. But, um, there was Even the South friendlies. Africa, I believe, that got cancelled as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not sure if that was mm -hmm. an official match, but mm -hmm. uh, the ones against Mozambique and Kenya were actually, uh, you know, jotted down as a, as a, as right. a friendly and uh, they were cancelled. But I think, um, yeah, as you said, there was three uh, friendlies against Klopp side in South, um, uh, South Africa, and there was uh, two friendlies against uh, Benfica's B side and Estoril in Portugal as well back in October, I believe it was. So, um, yeah, five friendlies all together. They won all five of them, but listen, I mean, these are uh, pretty much as, as, as good as uh, training games against uh, maybe under 21s or under 20s. So uh, I don't think um, it's, it's much to take from. Um, but in terms of getting the players um, to play with each other, especially the, um, the uh, domestic players who went to South Africa, um, you know, getting their match fitness up to um, up to you know up to the level that he, he wanted them to, uh, I think he was good in that sense. But um, yeah, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna count uh, three one win against um, uh, Orlando Pirates B team as a as a great you know, huge positive for us going into the Asian Cup, then uh, I'll leave that, you know, I'll leave that to you. Yeah. Um, Pejman? Uh, I really don't have nothing to add about it. I do agree with you. Uh, uh, was it Sinona who was talking? Yes. Yeah. Sina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do actually agree with uh, uh, with Sina. And uh, also, one of you guys, I don't remember if it's Sina or Bobak, mentioned that uh, this is just a... Uh, we don't have a plan B. Uh, actually, I don't know even know if we have a plan A. And, but I, I think we're going to come to that uh, later about the tactics and uh, how we're going to play. Bobak, anything else? 
I'm not sure how much you learn from a training camp of which uh, 99% of the players will not get uh, a minute on the pitch, I think. Other than Asmoon, I don't remember, I don't know, who else was there? That was Sadir, they might have been there. Yeah, well, about two or three of those players are going to actually get some minutes at the Asian Cup. What are you going to learn, really? Mm -hmm. So, other than having some team spirit or something like that, I don't think we learned anything. Thing. So overall, I think we've had close to no preparation whatsoever. So whatever is going to happen is going to be happening in the next week or 10 days before our first game. Yeah, exactly. But, sorry, talking of tactics again, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I agree with Babak. And I think the, the only reason why they could have even go to South Africa, whether it was before the World Cup or now, is because of fitness levels. And um, I, I kind of have some pity for Kairush because that's the only thing he can work on at the moment. And uh, it's all because of the way you know we play because we, you know we play defensively on the counter attack and he needs the fitness levels to be to be you know up to the levels that he wants him to. And um, most of our defensive plays are actually in Iran, uh, playing in Iran, and their fitness levels aren't that great. Especially that you know the ones who play for SLR who I watch closely, you know whether it's Sadiri or Andranik, Bakes are there. You know these these players have since the World Cup they've been really poor, and uh, I think he would have wanted them to um, to gain the uh, the form that they had uh, going into the World Cup. And as you know, it's the same for the likes of Haj Safi and Haydari and then the other players who played their trade in Iran and played uh, one game or two in the World Cup as well. Definitely. Um, the next topic I want to tell, which this is going to be really funny and controversial, was the appointment of Karimi. You know, I mean, that was pretty awesome to see him become an assistant coach um, without even having any co coaching badges and stuff. But since yesterday, we just found out he stepped down, and there has not been any particular reasons as to why that happened. Um, what do you guys think of it? I mean, this just doesn't make sense. It's just as they're about to board the plane to go to Australia... The, he steps down in the last minute as an assistant coach, which kind of reminds me of what happened to Omid and Namazi, which we really, really didn't find out of why he stepped down or why he left. Um, I'm going to go back to you now, Pejman. It's, um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I mean, uh, it reminds me of uh, the Swedish uh, player Marcus Albeck. Uh, he was actually... Uh, when he stepped down as a player, he instantly became uh, what they in Sweden call a player's manager. He didn't have any degree, but he was like uh, a link between the coach and the players, which seems like, okay, I get the point. Um, and I was thinking that maybe carrying uh, uh, a part in this would be the same. But uh, carrying me, although I, I like him a lot, but he seems too... I don't know if I would say moody, too controversial, too... Uh, uh, he, I think he, he doesn't know yeah. what he's doing. And we saw that in the 2000 World Cup too, when he didn't come on, he was just sitting on the bench, he didn't want to come onto the field. But um, now, Bobak, now on to you. Um, I mean, what do you have to say about this? I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of disappointing me too, because God knows, I mean, why? You know, last minute, um, we don't know, honestly, but... Uh, it's, a bit, it's very disappointing because who is going to be our assistant coach in Australia um, or do, are we even going to have one? I, I think that I wasn't that, uh, I didn't flinch when I heard he is, the, he is the coach or assistant coach or whatever and I'm not really bothered by the fact that he's not. He was there as a PR kind of stunt to somehow to appease the press or the, the Iranian coaches or the public and be a link maybe between, I believe more so between Kirosh and the outside as a barrier against the press, against those Iranian coaches. You have an Iranian legend on the team more than anything else. I don't think he had more of a input either in training or things. I really don't. Uh, his role was never clear, but uh, I really don't think it matters. I'm, I'm more, I'm more uh, focused on other things right now, so mm -hmm. I'm not really bothered, to be honest. Sina? Yeah, I completely agree with uh, what both of the guys said, but... Um, I think one thing that we missed out on was the fact that Kairos was under a lot of pressure before the World Cup and after the World Cup as well when he was renewing his contract that uh, he should be having an Iranian assistant, you know, someone who he can work with him and, and learn from him for the future. And I think <coughs> by by appointing Karimi, who I disagreed with in the first place, he kind of um, kept him quiet, you know, by saying, well, look, I have an Iranian assistant, now one of your greatest ever players, and he can learn from me. But 
as as Peshman said, he's 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 too controversial for me for yeah. an assistant manager to to <clears throat> even in these few months that he's been he's been there, he's had a few interviews and he's been in the press. But to be fair, I don't really want that from a, a coach, from an assistant manager mm-hmm. of of, uh, of the national team. I mean, the other Iranian coach in there is Marco Arajanian, who's um, supposedly really popular with with the players, but he, but you never hear him talking in the press or to anyone in particular he just gets on with his job and he helps out the team mm. and uh, I don't think you could uh, you could ever get that from uh, from Karimi one of uh, many points that you get out of his package you know whether you want to you want to put that as a good point or a bad point is, is the fact that he's too controversial yeah definitely um, now we're going to go back to uh, a second topic we're going to discuss and that's going to be our team the 23 man squad that uh, Kadosh has invited <laughs> For the Asian Cup, and I believe 15 of them coming from the World Cup are going to be part of the squad. And as we know, he first invited 21 players, and we know Pejman Montazeri, unfortunately, is going to be out, which he he had he did phenomenal in the World Cup. But and then the military issues of Surush Rafi and Mehta Puladi got fixed. Um, what are your thoughts on the Asian team, uh, Sina? Well, um, it's a good team. Yeah. You, you can't really see that much difference between this side and the one in the book, especially in the starting mm-hmm. eleven. But there are some good young players in there. I mean, uh, there is Ali Reza Bayram, the goalkeeper, mm-hmm. who's, who I really rate highly. I think he's uh, he's the one to look out for for the future. Mm-hmm. There is also Vuriya Gafuri. He's not that yeah. he's not that young. He's twenty seven, but he's a good right back who I who I think might start at right back um, mm-hmm. in the Asian Cup, especially because I don't really think Kerush looks at Haydari as a right back. He looks at him as more of a right midfielder, right winger type of uh, type of player. <laughs> There's also Vahida Amiri, uh, 26 year old, plays for Naft, left winger. He, he's, a, you know, I think after Hoy Safi, he's only a, he's the only left sided player we have uh, who can play further forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, Surish Rafi as well, who is considering the fact that he's an attacking midfielder, he's one of the top goal scorers in uh, in the Iranian league. It depends how highly you rate the Iranian league, but he's is what is one of the uh, top four goal scorers in there. So there is one or two names to look out for. There's also Mortaza Pur Ali Ganji, who uh, we've heard Kerosh, you know, really hate uh, rates him highly. He's a defensive midfielder who can play um, centre back as well, and I expect him to be uh, covering um, to be the third choice centre back if you like, because uh, the only recognised centre backs that we have in this squad are Hosseini and Sadari. Uh, Big Zadi can also play centre back, but I'm not sure if he has the ability or the concentration level to play there. But Pur Ali Gadji is uh, the other option that we have who who could um, slot in at centre back if uh, if he was ever needed. Yes, yeah, you know, I have one more question for you because I know you follow the Iranian league, uh, league of Bata very religiously. Um, can he can he tell the viewers of why you think uh, Reza Hayri, which he was part of a uh, World Cup, uh, or Khaled Bari, which you know he used to he was such a key player for us in the qualifiers, but he never got called up and he's doing really well for Sepahan, um for for Faraki's side. Um why do you think they didn't get called up? Well Reza Hayri has had a very poor season. I mean after the mm-hmm. World Cup he um he had the uh, the Iranian footballer syndrome if you want to call it that he he got too arrogant. He he was asking for a move to Qatar a few times from Paris Police. Uh, he didn't get that. He um, he asked for a new contract. He didn't get that. In a press police team that has been poor, has been poor all season. He was, you know, he's not. He's been almost, you know, he's been absent. To be fair, you could, you've been, you couldn't see him during the games. He was, he's been that poor. And mm-hmm. last week he uh, terminated his contract with press police, and now he's signed with uh, Padida in Mashhad. And Khaled Barry, it's a bit of a mystery, to be honest. I, I was really surprised to see him not go to the World Cup. Yeah. But um, not, you know, seeing him not involved in the current squad doesn't surprise me as much because if he's left out of the World Cup squad, then I'd, I, I wasn't really expecting him to be in this squad either. But yeah, he's a good player. He's almost thirty now. I think he's hit thirty or maybe even higher. So um, yeah, I think maybe it was the right choice not to take him. But yeah, I'm gonna. It's, it's a matter of opinion as well. I mean, yes. It's a squad, 23-man squad. Some people want certain players yeah, to that's go. That's I want you guys Some people don't want certain players to go. So yeah. Yeah. Bobak, what what are your thoughts on the age, on our team? Uh, on the starting lineup, looking at everything, I I'm, I think more or less everyone is in queue, and everyone would agree more or less on ninety percent of the choices. I'm su- a little bit pleasantly surprised that he's decided to 
blood in a few players from the to make up the numbers in the squad. Mainly, I think, is to give them this big tournament experience going forward, thinking of 2018 or whatever. He's tried to pick up players who may not necessarily be ready now, but players who may form a core of our side going forward. Bayron Band, I've heard a lot about. I've seen youth games when he represented uh, the Iranian uh, youth teams. Uh, the same time, Rafuri, I saw bits of pieces of him he seems decent but he's not that young then you go forward a little bit you see Omid Ebrahimi you see Suresh Rafi who looked good in his cameo appearance from Team Medley uh, up front as well you've talked about Amiri and obviously Stardar Asmoon who I think will play I think overall there's about 13 or 14 players who will get minutes but the rest of them are there just to take in the whole experience so that they may not be phased the next time we have qualif- qualifiers for the for the uh, World Cup for Russia so yeah I mean more or less, is kind of the squad that, that you would expect, I think. Yeah. Pejman, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I think uh, we will actually see some surprises. I mean, um, none of us was, at least not me, wasn't expecting like a Hariri to play mm-hmm. in the World Cup. Uh, yeah, exactly. He, I mean, he, he, barely, he barely made the cuts for me. Yeah, and then he was like one of our best players in the World Cup. Uh, and I think that like, we will see a surprise. We will see a, like maybe Pura de Ganji. Yeah, playing the first game from start and if it does well I think he will continue and uh, maybe Suru Shafi uh, and of course yeah uh, Osmond uh, I, I can't see him getting 90 minutes in any of the games but uh, I think we'll see some surprises and uh, maybe Omid Ebrahimi but all in all I do agree it, it's going to be like this, this 13 14 players that, that's going to play the main core from the World Cup squad uh, are there, and they're there to to play in Asian Cup. Yeah. You know, I have a I have another question, and this is just a single individual player, uh, Mehdad Puladi, because of military issues and stuff. He is he really considered match fit uh, to be taken, even though he was our um, I, th- I personally think he was our best player in the World Cup. But is he considered really match fit to even start or or be a backup option? Because I know probably Bakes that might take that role, or he might be a center back. But um, what do you guys? What are your thoughts on that, Bobak? Bobak? I think some technical issues, but uh, Peshman, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a good question. I mean, it's, he hasn't played for a long time, although he's experienced. Uh, he have to, in this, this last 10, 12 days, show himself to Kairos that, you know, he's fit, he's ready, and he, he can be a starting player. I think uh, the game against uh, Iraq on the 4th of January will, will decide his, uh, uh, he being ready or not. Personally, if he's, uh, if he's fit, I would love to see him play, but I don't want to see him play only because he made a good World Cup. Sina? Yeah, I mean, Fulati is above, um, above the World one. As you said, he had, he had an amazing World Cup. But uh, since then, he's been up and down... Um, Obviously, he's had the military issues since since the end of the World Cup, and he was contracted to Persepolis, and he couldn't even train. He terminated his contract in um, December, in uh, September, sorry, I think it was, and he's, he was without a club for almost a month. And once he found the club, he was Al Shahani. I think he was in October or mid October or end of October when he joined them, and he played a few games for them. And yeah, as as the guy said, I think um, I don't think he's he's that fit. But um, if he's not to play, I wouldn't like to see Biggs other there. To be honest, um, I want to see Hard stuff he given a uh, given a go at that side. He's he's got a great work rate. He's uh, he's a really versatile player. And for a player of his age, I mean, he's 24, and look at his uh, international experience. He's got 66 caps. I think for a player of his age, he's got great experience, and uh, he's he's definitely one to trust as well. If if Puladi wasn't much fit. And uh, if uh, K. Rush doesn't think he can do a job at left back, then I definitely want to see how Safi there. Definitely. Now, Bobak, uh, Sina and uh, Peshwan said their opinions on uh, Puladi. What are your thoughts? Is he really considered match fit to be taken to the to be taken to Australia? To be honest, I'm not sure about 
match fit or even mentally fit for a player who doesn't know if he's going to a big tournament until on the eve of the flight. So I don't know about that. But what I do know is that uh, Kirosh trusts Fuladi. He was one of our best players, if not our best player at the World Cup. So he, the fact that he kept two slots open for Rafi and Fuladi shows how much... Uh, importance he puts to them so i think uh, he's gonna go obviously and i think he will start actually right, perfect. Uh, now another question that i'm gonna ask is that as we we just discussed about puladi which he turned out to be our best player um now my other question to you guys is who do you guys think will be our most important player coming into this uh, asian cup i'm gonna start off with pejon for this um i mean it's actually a hard question because uh uh, Iran is, is is actually a, a team nowadays. You know, yeah. not especially in the World Cup. You know, we we uh, we don't have the lone star anymore, uh, which is good because it's it's a it's a sport with eleven players. But uh, if if you want to uh, single handedly pick out one important player, I think it's it's still going to be Nekunam uh, mm -hmm. for his. Uh, this will probably be his his last games in the national team. Uh, he will his his uh, role as keeping the the team together and uh, making the important decisions uh, will be crucial for how Team Eddie will do in Asian Cup. Yeah. Sina, um, I think if there was ever one player who we look to to really push us forward and really perform to get the best out of us going forward is probably Dejaga. I mean, I've not seen a lot of him in the last few games, and I. I think they made up for him. Um, you know, he's been playing in, in the Middle East for for six months now, and he's used to playing against these kind um, Western Asian uh, countries. And the fact that he's, he's in, in his pre previous um, appearances for Iran, he's done pretty well against teams from uh, West Asia. I think he's one of those players. I think we we look forward to seeing him in this tournament, and I think he should. I personally expect him to perform, and uh, especially going forward, I think he, he should offer a lot more than he did uh, he did in the World Cup if we are to, to get anything out of the games, which Bob, we expect us. Yeah, um, I'd like to, before I give a name, I'd like to just uh, give some comments on what the guys said about mm -hmm. uh, Nekunam. Um, I don't know. Uh, he was very poor in the World Cup, in my opinion. Uh, he's well past his best. He slows down the tempo way too much. I don't know how uh, important he is, or I know how important he should be, but I'm not sure he is uh, playing that role anymore. About Dejaga, for me, normally I would say yes, he is probably the one who's going to make us tick. Um, not sure how he is in terms of physically or in terms of mentally after playing in the Middle East uh, for the last few months. But personally speaking, I think for me, it's going to be Ali Reza Jean Bash. He's going into the tournament with, uh, in the form of his life. He's had eight goals and 12 assists in his 20, in his 20 games for NEC. Uh, he's probably as confident as he's ever been. He's an un, uh, unknown uh, entity for the opponents, probably. Uh, I have a lot of expectations that this guy is going to actually be our key player at this tournament. So, so by by coming to that, um, we've always we saw we saw how Puladi ended up becoming our hero, even though a lot of us didn't expect that. So, would you say he's gonna be our most important player and that type of player if if, uh, if uh, like a regular fan doesn't know about him? I think more so the breakout player, like on the second category you described. But mm -hmm. personally speaking, for me, I think he's going to be very important in terms of creativity and in terms of opening up opponents. Uh, two of the things which we're very weak at. Uh, he's also very direct and he's quite pacey. Something the rest of our players up front, while they have creativity, they're not the fastest. Dejaga is not really that fast. Masu Shajai is definitely not that fast. Um, Reza Gwishan in Najat also, he's not fast either, so we don't have pace and for a counter-attacking, a defensive counter-attacking team. That's a big, big uh, problem because you need to have pace on your counters. So, yes, I think Jahan Bash could be very important to us. Sina, who do you think is going to be that one player that we wouldn't expect it, but he might actually turn up to be no, a I, quite, quite player? I agree with, um, I agree with Bobak in, in the mm -hmm. sense that I think in a midfield that uh, lacks energy and mobility, yeah. uh, the likes of Jahan Bach and Rafi as well could uh, could prove to be um, 
you know, really useful for us, uh, especially Jahan Bash and Rafi as well. If he plays, he will play in the middle. And uh, considering that he will play with Andranik and Nakuna, who don't really have that much pace and don't have the mobility that maybe they had once um, a long time ago, I think uh, he could be crucial for us and, uh, of course, Jahan Bash as well. So, yeah, but uh, I would love to see Rafi, Rafi start, but um, I think he, he probably wouldn't... Uh, I expect uh, Heydari to to start at right wing or Masood in the middle. Hmm. Pejman? Uh what was your question? The important player? What? Um, like you know, we saw in the World Cup that we weren't really expecting Pulaudi to be our most down the key player, and he turned out to be that. Um, if if this current if looking at our starting lineup, which we all know what that's probably going to look like, um, who would you say it's going to turn out to be? That would that be like, for example, just an example, Jalal Hosseini, <laughs> you know, Taimurian, Dejaga, Shojai. Who do you think will that be? Would will be that key player that um, we wouldn't expect to be that. Um, crucial for us but he turns out to be that case I would love to see Sardar Osmond being that player because mm-hmm. we all know that he's a dangerous goal scorer I don't know if he will get any play time well, he will get some play now but maybe not that much but I think uh, I hope at least that he will be the one that scores the goals for us uh, because we all see that he's, he's dangerous and he's really uh, uh, adapting well to Europe and uh, um, being a, a crucial player, although he haven't got that much playtime this year in Rubin Kazan, we, we can't forget that uh, he's still young and uh, he, he he can uh, uh, he has time to both uh, uh, get better uh, and uh, adjust to to the national team. But I hope to see uh, Sardar Azmoun being that uh, dark horse. Mm-hmm. Good point. Um, my next question is, we've obviously touched on Ali Reza, Jambosh, and Salah Arzman. These are the two most key youngsters that are coming through the national team. Um, would Would you guys agree that uh, Jahan Baksh might be a potential starter or uh, Osman being on the bench? Or would you guys say that both could have the potential to start? Which I doubted, but I just wanted to know your thoughts. I'm going to start off again with uh, Sina on this. Yeah, I think Jahan Baksh. Will start in the last moon. Um, in the last few games that Iran has played uh, in the friendlies in South Africa and Portugal, um, he's always well. I say always. Most of the time, he's started with um, Ansari Fad, which shows that he Kairos doesn't believe that he can lead the line on his own. And I expect him to be a plan B, and I expect him to come on as a sub in second half, playing alongside another striker rather than replacing the striker, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's a great player. He's got great potential. We can talk about how um, great he can be in the future. But um, for now, I think uh, maybe he's better off uh, being on the bench, being our plan B, because, as I said, apart from him as an individual player, we don't have any anyone else to look forward to coming off the bench and uh, making things happen for us. And as as for Jahan Bach, um, yeah, I, I expect him to start, absolutely. Yeah. Babak? Yeah, I, I think Jahan Bach is nailed on to start. If he doesn't, I would be shocked and extremely disappointed. Uh, Asmun... Uh, from what I've seen and what I've heard is that Kiros likes to try him out as a central striker quite a lot, which uh, which I personally feel that it would make more sense to play him off the striker, like Sina said, as a second striker or as someone in the role, the number 10 role that has more freedom to roam around. Uh, that's the kind of impression he's given me from the times that I've watched him play. Um, but I agree. I think he's going to come off the bench. Uh, Reza is going to start up front. Uh, it's going to be between Ansari Fad and Asmoon in terms of how they come on and who uh, replaces who. Pejman? Yeah, I, I do agree with both the guys. And, and I do believe it would be a shocker if Jahan Bach, our best player uh, after the World Cup, would don't get a place in front of 11 first. And I do agree that uh, Osmoon can be a good injection coming in, uh, like in the second half. And uh, maybe I, I would love to see Osmoon and uh, Uchan Najad playing together. I don't know uh, if they've done it really, in, in maybe in uh, maybe in training probably, but uh, I hope to see them uh, at least against uh, Iraq. Sure, and let, let us see what they can do. But yeah, I do believe Osmu can be uh, a good sub, and hopefully, if he is good enough, he will actually start uh, maybe second or third game. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, thank you for your points. Now, I'm going to go to our predicted lineup. And this is Kadosh's predicted lineup that I think. Um, now and then we're going to have a little small discussion about this. If you guys agree, who would you guys want in and stuff. So, goalkeeper, obviously, is going to be Adrian Zahairi. Uh, right back, Heydari. With Montaziri being out, I said it's going to be Jalal Hosseini and Sadiri being our starters in the center back role. Left back, I have Hart Safi. Uh, this is a 4 2 3 1. In the center midfield, I have Taimurian and Nekunam. On the right flank, I have Dejaga. And in the middle, in the number 10 row, I have Shojai. And the left wing, I have Jahanbash. And as our striker, I put Gucha Nejad. Um, Pejman, um, is there anybody? Do you agree with this lineup? Who would you think would be a better option? Um, you know, looking with the opponents you're playing. Um, I can see that lineup happening, actually. Uh, maybe I, I don't know the how fit Shujo is. He's playing in a uh, in Middle East with a club that's not going so well. Although he's getting some play time, I can see him being hungry and important as a as a sub. I don't know who can replace him though. Uh, I know if, if, if Rafi would be the right player, uh, or even Osmoon, uh, because. Uh, we will then we'll get a, a really offensive starting lineup, but I think that's what we need. We can't play defensively against teams like Bahrain, Qatar, and UAE. Mm. But yeah, I, I can see that happening. Yeah. Sina? Yeah, I mean, um, personally, I don't think Haydari will play right back. Um, I don't think um, <laughs> Kairos really believes in him as a right back. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I don't think he's as good you know, from a defensive point of view, he, sometimes he lacks concentration. And I think he's going to sub with Kafuri at right back. With, as you said, Hossein in the middle, I don't think we have that much option apart from those two anyway. But uh, the inclusion at Hoj Safi at left back, I think that will completely depend whether Huladi is match fit uh, to start or not. But um, yeah, I think if he is fit, then Puladi definitely. Um, Ando and Nekunam in the middle. Jahan Bakhsh, I'd like to see him at uh, right wing. With uh, Personally, I mean, he probably wouldn't start, but uh, I would go with uh, Rafi in the middle. I, I, don't, I'm, I know I'm talking about him too much, but I think that he will add something different. He's you know, probably from a opposition point of view as well. People didn't know that much about him. He's a young player, he's hungry, he's never been in a, uh, you know, he's never played for Iran. He's, he's only got one cap. So um, I, if he is to be given that role, I think he'll do a good job. Gucci and Nejad, uh, oh sorry, I mean Nejad got left wing and Gucci up front. And one of the reasons why Gucci plays up front, I think we've touched on it many times, is his work rate. I think considering uh, the way we play, his work rate will be uh, crucial. And I think that's one of uh, one of the players that we missed out on when we were talking about unsung heroes. I think uh, one of the things he offers is work rate and his ability to to close down defenders and, and make them hurry. When, need, when needed, and uh, he does that really well. And uh, another thing I think really worries me is Sadari. Obviously, we play a defensive, defensive game, but uh, you know, against the likes of Bahrain or Qatar, if we need to open up, push forward a little bit, his lack of pace and his fitness really worries me. He's, he, he's missed half of the season due to injury, and when he's come back, he's not looked fit at all. He, he looks a little overweight, and I think he could get caught out. Um, and that's that's a really worrying sign for me as well. Bye bye. Uh, I think the major question right now is about Puladi, whether he's going to start or not. If if he does start, I can't see Hasafi not starting. That's the thing. I feel Hassan Hasafi is one of the eleven names on the team sheet, so I think it'll push Hasafi into midfield next to Nekunam and uh, Taimurian uh, to give us a more solid base over there. I think Jahan is on the right wing, Dejava is on the left, Gucci is on up front. That those three are definites for me. Taimurian and Nekunam, obviously. Uh, Saturday, I'm worried about, but I think him and uh, Hosseini will start. Right back, mm, I still think Hey Daddy may get the nod in the first game, and depending on how that goes, uh, things may change. But uh, personally speaking, I respect the amount of work that uh, Gucci puts on for the team. It, it's, a, it's a horrid role to run around uh, almost uh, with nothing to play with. And we're going to be playing counter-attacking football um, 
largely during the tournament, especially against the stronger nations. So I would like to see a number 10 who plays close to him, someone like Azmoun uh, playing behind him and linking up with him to get him more involved in the team instead of being so isolated, so far away between the two lines behind them. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Uh, but uh, on paper, people will expect us to attack Bahrain, Qatar, UAE. Personally speaking, I don't think it's going to pan out that way. Okay. Also, sorry, um, sorry, guys. Uh, one of the players we haven't mentioned, and I think he will get a few minutes on the pitch, is um, a player called Ram uh, Ramin Rezaian. But this guy, I'm pretty sure most of you haven't heard of him. Um, yeah. He's he's a, he's for me personally, he's more of a young Haydari type of player. He can play anywhere on the right hand side. He's got a bit of pace on him. And um, having looked at the team sheets that um, Kerush has been putting out during the friendlies, he's been He's been there by taking him to the Asian Cup. He he sees something in him, and I uh, I see him, you know, coming on once at least um, during one of the three games in the group stages. So yeah, he could be one of uh, one of the players, uh, unknown players for even the Iranian fans uh, to look forward to as well. Now, guys, I'm gonna go to the third discussion, and this is gonna be our group opponents that we've uh, briefly talked about. And we're in Group C, and uh, we're obviously not in the group of death, but we're in a very tricky group, even though we're favorites uh, to to top the group. But um, we have Bahrain, Qatar, and UAE. And I know Bob, I can know a lot about UAE. Um, what are your thoughts on them as opposed to Bahrain and Qatar? Do you think they're gonna be in the second, or do you think it's gonna be Qatar? What are your thoughts? I think that uh, this is as almost as hard as it gets, despite what other people think. People, uh, Iranians, don't like to respect the other, uh, let's say, West Asian countries that much. We see ourselves above them. Personally speaking, I think the gap has closed considerably over the last 10 years. Uh, this is the UAE's golden generation. Uh, their best set of footballers. They did well in the Olympics. Yeah. They actually played really well, to be honest. Uh, Qatar uh, has been a formidable opponent for us in the last few years. Uh, we've had a lot of draws with them. There's a lot of young players in there who I would, I would think they can get into our team. There's a UAE striker called Ali Makhout. Uh, he's a top quality oh, striker. He's just yeah. broken yeah. through. He's just broken through. Yeah, he's a, he, he scores goals for fun. And this guy, yeah. I, would, I would really consider him starting for Team Melli. There's a player from Qatar called Khalfan, Khalfan Ibrahim. He's a great number ten, skillful. He was an Asian uh, Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Uh, Qatar won the Golf Cup recently. They beat Saudi Arabia. Uh, they beat the UAE. Uh, UAE, it was disappointing for them. They finished third. But I really think these two especially are going to be very tough opponents for us. They play attacking football. Uh, they're not afraid to take the game to their opponents. I think they will actually attack us. They're not going to respect us. No one looks at Iran the same way uh, teams looked at us 10, 15 years ago. That respect or that fear, let's say more like fear, is gone. And be sure that UAE and Qatar will both be expecting to... Um, to actually have a good chance to beat us during the games. Bahrain, it's more of a team in transition. Um, a lot of older players are still there. Mohamed Salmin, for example. Uh, they have uh, Tayyip. He's in attack. He's our number 11. He's a very, very uh, tricky striker. Um, I would expect this group to go down to the third game with nothing certain whatsoever. So I, I'm actually a bit worried, to be honest. Pejman? Uh, that was a great analyst, actually. I, I do agree a lot. And uh, just as you guys say, there are no easy opponents these days. I think no. actually Qatar could uh, could very well beat us because they had uh, great results in the Gulf Cup. Uh, and we know all the resources and the time they put down. Uh, they can actually uh, play as... Uh, uh, they don't play as the way we used to see them play. Uh, although, uh, and this is my, my, my big fear... Uh, just as you guys mentioned, is that uh, Iranians, we do uh, uh, we, we think that we can beat these teams because we usually do, or at least we draw against them. It's not so often that we lose against these teams. But this is the Asian Cup, and these teams are well prepared, and they, and they know what, what they're doing. Uh, and our preparation is that we have a coach who's been with us long enough time to know uh, the tactics and the players know the tactics, but th that's basically our preparation. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm worried that uh, our group opponents can uh, make it 
uh, uh, really, really, really tough and really interesting for us. And uh, I'm looking forward to all three games. I think all three games, I think all four teams are, are capable to get into the second round, to the quarterfinals. So, you know. There was just one more player. I just sorry. No, no problem. Player right. just uh, slipped off my, my mind from Qatar. Their number ten, Bualem Khoukhi. He's fantastic talent. Uh, this guy is gonna be uh, one of the best players in Asia for sure. He's a tricky attacking midfielder. He's already established in the team. Uh, he plays for Al Arabi as well. Uh, he's a guy you have to keep your eye out for. Babak, who's the um, Algerian guy who plays for Qatar? Algerian born. I forgot his name. I'm not sure. Algerian born, there's one for Bahrain, uh, Ayesh, Fauzi Ayesh. But uh, for for Qatar, they brought in a, a Congolese player, I think. Uh, and a Ghanaian. Yeah, the yeah. Ghanaian is Mohamed Muntari. He's never played yeah. before for them. And then the other guy is Mohamed Trezor Abdullah. So they're both. Uh, they're both going to start, I think. They're, they're important players for their clubs, but uh, to be honest, I, have, I haven't seen that much of them. I know they're highly rated, though. There's also their keeper as well, Borhan, I think his name is, right? Yeah, he, he was, yes, uh, awesome, Borhan. He was a uh, goalkeeper of the tournament at the Golf Cup. Yeah. He, we've seen him almost for the last seven, One six, of seven years against us. in my eyes. Yeah, he's solid, uh, a little bit eccentric, but he's a solid goalkeeper, yes. Very commanding. I remember when we played them uh, in Tehran, um, finishing uh, the game finished nil nil, yeah. and uh, we must have put in at least fifty crosses, and he caught pretty much all of them. Um, yeah, as yeah. as the guy said, listen, we played against Qatar four times in the last two or three years. We drew three times and won one nil, uh, which was uh, Gucci's goal in Qatar. And we very we lucky goal. Yeah, we tend to we tend to struggle against team yeah. these teams now, and rightly so. You know, as the guy said, uh, they are they have some great players. Bahrain, who is supposedly, as I said, you know, our easiest opponent, uh, they beat uh, surprisingly they beat Saudi Arabia today by by four goals to one. So yeah. there's absolutely no e- easy games, and I think, um, yeah, as you know, I think we'll struggle. It won't be an easy ride at all. Um, probably, our, if we go through by finishing first, mm-hmm. probably our second round game will be easier than the games in the, in the group stages yeah. because we'll be. Facing either Iraq or Jordan Imaez, and Iraq don't really have a goal scoring um, a potential anymore as, as they once used to. And Jordan, the, uh, Ray Wilkins, their new manager, and they haven't won a game under him yet, so they come in the, into the tournament a bit off form. So if we go through our first thing, we'll be meeting those two, and I expect them, I expect ourselves to to be either of them. But that's a big if if we finish I- first. I personally think that our problem is where we're still living in the past. We think we're good enough to break down teams. I can't remember the last Iranian team that was capable of breaking down opponents. I think, for me personally, it was the team that failed to qualify for the 2002 World Cup. That was a fantastic team with huge potential, great creativity. We are just a bit unlucky, let's say. But uh, we need to let these guys play football. We need to give the ball to Qatar, give the ball to Bahrain. There's no shame in that. Give the ball to UAE. Let them play a little bit. Let them expand their game, let them open up spaces and allow us to use our strength, which is counter-attacking. Yeah. We're not a team that has the tempo to be able to dictate uh, play. We, we really slow it down too much, especially in Nekunam. It, it, we keep on switching the play from one flank to the other and it, it just kills our impetus. I, I would like us to have confidence in the defense which K. Rush has built, let the opponents have more of the ball and let us try to hit them on the counter-attack. It, it's it goes towards our strengths instead of trying to break down an opponent, ending up with uh, ending up failing basically and getting hit on the counter. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Now speaking about that, Bobby, I just want to come back to you again. Do we speaking about number tens that we've spoken of? That do we have a natural number ten that could do that for us in the middle to exploit uh, the likes of Baron? Do we have that kind of player that we used to have, or? Uh, does, is that somebody that is not a natural team but could do that job for us? Do you think we have that certain kind of player that could help us achieve that? If I think if Dejaga plays as a number 10, it's mm-hmm. possible because he has creativity and he has pace. Masu Chojoy has the creativity, doesn't have any pace. Asmun could play there. Asmun could play there. Rafi as, as well. But as of now, it's a bit in the air. We may not mm-hmm. even play with the number 10 if Haj Safi plays with uh, Nekunam and Temurian. So... 
I don't think we have someone who's really staked a claim right now to say we're the, I'm the undisputed number ten in this side. You build the team around me. But uh, Qatar uh, definitely has one. UAE has Omar Abdul Rahman uh, if he's really match fit. So the opponent, a lot of teams have that number ten. But right now for us, it's a bit uncertain. Seen our page run anything about that? Yeah, yeah I, I, we can come back to, to the idea of uh, how we're going to play and we, if we, we want to allow them to uh, to uh, have the ball and uh, make them counter-attack uh, or make Iran uh, counter-attack. I mean, uh, it's really difficult and it comes back to, to this thing I said that we don't even have a plan A because although these teams, we consider them uh, good, like uh, Qatar and uh, UAE and Bahrain, we, we must not forget that uh, they're not their, our opponents in uh, in the World Cup. That we expect they, we expected them to to have the ball against us. I don't know how much we can expect them to have the ball against us, and we can be certain of our defense. Uh, we saw against uh, Bosnia that our defense has some really weaknesses too that that, that can hurt us really bad. Uh, as long as we don't get an early goal against us, then maybe we can survive. I think the important thing for us, and it will be really interesting to see how uh, Keroj copes with that, is that uh, are we that one-dimensional that we only have one type of play, one, one type of tactic or not? Are we only this counter-attacking team or uh, are we a team that can actually have the ball and have position and, and be able to, uh, to create opportunities of our own? For me, that would be the most important thing to see in the World Cup, uh, sorry, in the Asian Cup. Yeah. Sina? Yeah, talking of number 10s, I think um, the only natural number 10s that we have are Shojai and Rafi. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shojai, is, of course, is not the player that he he once was uh, four years ago, maybe five, six years ago. And Rafi, maybe maybe it's too early for him to start, uh, which, to start a role which I believe is a huge role going forward. So, yeah, we've, we've got to wait and see what happens. But... Um, in, in, in response to what Pejman said, I think it's a little late for us to, to discuss whether we can play, um, you know, open football or, or be a defensive team. I think it's too late now going into a tournament like this, uh, considering the players that we have and, and the current um, and the current age that they're all in as well. Uh, when when we played Nigeria in our first game in the group stages of the World Cup, we had six over thirty players. I expect that to be the same as well. Maybe one or maybe one player uh, of of that six not starting. So certainly the average age will be high. And uh, as we said, as we spoke of of the midfield, we don't have that energy and that creativity going forward. So our only choice is to sit back, um, make sure we keep that clean sheet, which is really crucial, and get one or two goals on the counter and set pieces. On set pieces are so important for us especially in this tournament. I mean, they were huge for us in the World Cup as well. We had a couple of chances of uh, set pieces against Nigeria and Argentina as well. So in this one, I expect I expect us to be more threatening on, on the uh, on, on set pieces and uh, hopefully grab a goal or two uh, from, from corners and, and free kicks as well. Man, thank you. Guys, let, let's, let's not forget that uh, for the World Cup qualifiers, uh, until the last three games, the jury was out on whether we'll make it and whether Kirosh will, will make it, actually. Mm -hmm. Until he changed the tactics slightly, decided to completely have a, let's say, rethink about how to approach games. And it worked perfectly against our opponents. Uh, we, before that, we were under the illusion that we have to try to attack opponents. We have to take the ball. We are Iran. We are this. We are that. Maybe it came to a point where Kirosh uh, realized that, listen, I have a team that has certain ceiling in terms of ability or in terms of uh, what they can do, and I need to get the most out of it. He felt his job was on the line, and he really went to the bare bones, and he, he went back to the drawing board, and he what he came up with was something that worked. Yes, we can try to uh, take the ball and try to attack opponents. Yes, we can. Anyone can. But the question is, we tried to do that a little bit more with Bosnia, and what happened is we got hit on the counter. They hit us on the counter. So I'm worried about us actually feeling like we have the impetus or we should have the impetus to attack i think we can but we won't be that successful at it so we might as well try to play to our strengths that's just my uh, my viewpoint yeah thank you guys for your input now i want to go to the last topic and this is mostly about the general you know brief about your predictions on the asian cup and stuff so in group a we have australia korea kuwait and oman 
And um, who do you guys think is going to advance? Which we all probably could agree on who's going to do do that. Um, y- your thoughts? Just, just shout it out. Uh, I can start, Peshman. Well, uh, it would be a disappointment if Australia didn't uh, make it to the second round. And also Korea is, uh, is uh, the other favorite. Although I think Oman can uh, be a surprise. Would you guys, would, just speaking about Oman and looking at this whole tournament, who would you guys say was gonna, is going to be our dark horse um, before we get to each individual team? I was, um, uh, I mean, about a month, over a month ago, I was um, really back in Saudi Arabia because mm-hmm. I think the Asia's tournament team, the turn up to tournaments, but um, mm-hmm. considering how they performed uh, in the in the Gulf Cup and, and their rec- recent uh, managerial change, I don't think, um, I don't think they're as big as a threat that I thought they might be, but still they'd be a very tough opponent. Uh, Uzbekistan is another one as well. Um, they shouldn't be all underestimated at all. But there are, there are. You, you could name all sixteen countries and say, you know, they have a chance or, you know, make a case for them. Mm-hmm. But don't think. I, one I thing agree. is for sure. One thing is for sure that there is no clear favorite for me. Um, mm-hmm. I think a good, a good run of form, a good, you know, a few locks here and there, and anyone, anyone can win it. Right. Babak, Pejman. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with what Sina said more or less. Uh, Uzbekistan is a team I'm always waiting for them to explode, but they just don't. But if I were to just pick out one team, I think uh, hopefully the other team that qualifies with us in the group, I would assume that we do, Qatar or UAE could pose a shock somewhere along the line. Uh, yeah, I do also believe that uh, Qatar and Uzbekistan uh, could be finalists all, all the way. Uh, as, as you guys said, uh, um, as Bobak said, 16 teams, uh, a, a part of like uh, uh, Palestine, maybe even North Korea, uh, a, a lot of the teams are potential finalists. And, and that's fun for this tournament. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons uh, why we watch it, because it's, it's uncertain. It's up for grabs, really. Now looking at Group B, there's China, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Uzbekistan. If, if we had to say two of these teams are going to advance, most likely it's going to be Uzbekistan or you know, potentially Saudi Arabia. Um, would, do you guys agree with that? I think yeah, China, I, so. I, I, I think China if can uh, maybe uh, do some upsets. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope so because uh, I remember they had a really young and good squad uh, that did quite okay back in like uh, 2002 and now uh, they're uh, getting this new generation up but mm. I don't know yeah I think I, I kind of agree China they, they have they have something but I don't think uh, this is their tournament mm. I think Alan Perrin is the, the, who's the manager he's certainly building uh, for the next uh, you know for the future and I think maybe in four years time for the next Asian Cup Maybe we can expect something more of them, but uh, yeah, I think Uzbekistan and Saudi Arabia will uh, will go through from the group. Now looking at our yeah, group. Think, oh, sorry, Bob, I go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think Chinese team uh, has potential. There, most of the players are 24, 25, so you can say that four years from now they'll be hitting their peak. But uh, it's a surprise for me. China has so much potential. Mm-hmm. They have some of the best clubs in uh, Asian football as well, but they're just not translating that on the international level. I, I would say uh, Uzbekistan and Saudi as well. Yeah. So looking at our group, we have Bahrain, us, Qatar, and UAE. Um, who do you guys think will advance and no, not be biased or anything actual thinking? Um, Bobak, who do you think is going to advance from our group? Not being biased or anything. Three, yeah, if we think we're going to win all three games, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we won all three games. At the same time, I won't be surprised if we got knocked out in the first round. This is my... Yeah. I'm really a little bit out there. I'm not sure what's, how it's going to play out. But uh, let's just assume I'm going to say Iran will finish first in our group. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to add one more team. It's going to be Qatar probably, I would okay. say. Do you guys agree with that, Pejman or Sina? Yeah, I agree. Sina? Yes, same here. Personally, I think when it comes to the tactical side of the game, I think Qatar, Qatar just about edges UAE in that sense, and I think uh, they'll yeah. have what it takes to uh, to 
go to the next round. Yeah. Now looking at Group D, which I think is going to be the easiest potentially out of all the groups, is Iraq, Japan, Jordan, and Palestine. And uh, we could safely say that probably by the looks of it, it could be Japan and Jordan advancing to the next stage. Um, Cena coming off, would you agree with that? Or do you think it's going to be, you know, Palestine or Iraq coming on because that's going to explode? Japan, definitely. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of uh, Iraqi friends and they're, they're really excited uh, about the tournament. Uh, you know, they don't really have that much hope because uh, the managers had just been sacked and uh, they didn't really... Uh, had a really bad uh, golf cup as well, but I'm going to go for Iraq. I think Jordan are, are coming into the tournament, as I said, in a bad run of form as well, and so Iraq. But um, I don't know. Uh, I, I just think. Peshman and Bobak? Bobak, you go first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, yeah, Japan definitely they're my favorites anyway for the tournament. But uh, I'm gonna throw a spanner and say Palestine is gonna finish second. Iraq has had a horrid last 12 months or so. Uh, Jordan, I'm not convinced by Ray Wilkins. The team is an aging team. Uh, their star player is probably still Amr Shafi, the goalkeeper. I still really think he's one of the best in Asia. But I think you know Palestine has a lot of preparation. They they, they look like they could cause an upset. And playing against their neighbors, I would think. That they would have a chance. So I'm going to say Japan finishes first and uh, it goes down to goal difference between the other three maybe and Palestine qualifies. Yeah. Pejman? I think Japan, of course, and uh, Iraq because they have some individually really good players that can be match-changing for this kind mm -hmm. of uh, competitions. So I go with Iraq. Yeah, no. yeah there are, there's a the young player called Ali Adnan who I know Babak knows of. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. also a, Ali a, youngster, a youngster called Yunus Mahmoud, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him again as well. Yeah. Now, looking at. <laughs> the... <laughs> He's the kind of guy we should be signing to one of our clubs in Iran. He's, yeah. he's a quality striker. He is. Always an eye for goal. He's the Iranian Enoyati. <laughs> yeah. Now um, I'm gonna make this more general. Now, who do you guys think is gonna win this tournament? Um, your favorite, if you had to put a money on it, and uh, who's gonna be finishing first, second, or third? And we're gonna go with Pejman on this one first. Oh man, you know I always always predict wrong every every time. Uh, so don't pick us. I, don't pick us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I go with I go with uh, Qatar winning the whole thing. Oh, whoa! Oh. Oh. It's a big call. Mm, big call. Yeah, uh, I can tell why betting companies love will, you, but who knows? Will, oh, sorry. They will play against uh, Australia in the finals. There you go. Okay, and third place. Who do you think is gonna grab up third place? Are, are there any any third place games? Yeah, there are. Yeah, um, yeah. It will probably be Iran. Iran. Bobak. Uh, normally, I would say Japan. I just have a feeling this Australian team, with yeah. a little bit of luck at home with yeah. their crowd, even though I have a lot of uh, few Australian, let's say, colleagues I talk to, they say the crowd will probably work against Australia with the pressure. I'm going to say Australia is going to win it, and uh, they'll probably beat Japan in the final. Th those are my two favorites, anyway. Sina? I'm going to be um, less controversial and say Japan. I think. Um, on paper, they definitely have the best squad. I think they're more experienced now, uh, having played in the World Cup and the last Asian Cup as well. They've got some great players, uh, you know, young players coming through, and they've got, as I said, some ex great experienced players playing in Europe. So um, yeah, I think I think they they'll win it again. Um, South Korea, not for me. Uh, I think they, as, again, they've got some great young players, but I think it's a little too early for them. As for Australia, um, again, not for me. I don't think I don't think they have what it takes to go all the way. Um, I'm not sure about their manager if he's tactically uh, up to it. If he'll if he has what it takes to take him forward because they're not clear favourites. They will have more than one or two games where they'll need to grind out wins. And I'm not sure if they if they have if they have that um, sense to them when, where they can grind out wins. And I think they'll let uh, fall through on the way. Yeah, so who do you think is going to be third place? Um, 
I'm gonna go for Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, my final question, which is gonna be actually, you know, a little bit off topic, but I just want to know your inputs, because we know in Kadersh's contract that um, if he doesn't apparently do well in the Asian Cup, even if we go far, do you guys think he's gonna be terminated and left, and we're gonna go sign a foreign manager, or somebody from within Iran? Um, that's my final question to you, for you guys, and I'm gonna go with Cena for this one. If we don't end up, do even if we do well, do you think we, he's gonna get sacked because he's gonna win it, or if we do so poorly? Would you say he's going to be terminated and he's not going to be back and we're going to go sign probably a foreign manager or somebody uh, within Iran? Personally, I don't think there's any point discussing this at all until the yeah. tournament is started or at least yeah, yeah. finished. Because, you know, we're going into a tournament, uh, the team seems ready and they're looking forward to it. Um, so, you know, let's just, let's just see how they get on. Yeah. If, if, he do, if he doesn't do as well as we think he has, if we go out group stages, which is a disaster, you know, let's not kid ourselves. As tough as a group as it is, we expect ourselves to, to go through at least. Um, but, yeah, as I said, let's, let's see how it goes and then, and then uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after the tournament. Um, but, yeah, again, you know, IFF is probably the most unpredictable uh, <laughs> uh, governing body in, in in the whole football world, uh, yeah, footballing world. So you don't, you don't know what they what they'll do. Yeah. You just have to wait and see. Yeah. Bob Acker, um, Pedro, anything else? Like uh, if you guys had to predict what's gonna happen in the future if we don't end up playing well. I I think personally that uh, we need to understand what are our expectations. What do people yeah. expect from Iran in this tournament, and what does the IFF expect? Personally speaking, for me. Quarterfinals is the expectations, yeah. both minimum and in terms of we should be satisfied with that. Uh, anything more than that is a bonus. Uh, yeah. My w what I want is to be able to hit, uh, build something for the future. And I feel with the name, the squad he's named, he's he's given us an insight into what he's thinking four years down the line. I'm more interested in that next team because that team could potentially uh, be the backbone for the next eight, seven, eight years, or maybe even longer. So. As long as people know what their expectations are, because no one's talking, and I'm worried that some people actually think we have to bring the trophy back home to Tehran or something like that, which for me is a it's a no non-starter completely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Pejman, I think both Sina and Bobak made two really good points there. Uh, one other thing that you know we said IF, IFF is IFF is uh, unpredictable. It's like. <laughs> Let's say that they do want to sack him. It's like, is that even possible? You know, considering the the like, then they have to pay him for the la for the couple yeah. of uh, three and a half years left on his contract. And we all know how IFF doesn't uh, know how to pay their coaches. You know, so it would be <laughs> a, a really strange struggle. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's focus on the Asian Cup, and uh, hopefully, we do well. Well, thank you guys for coming on, and as always, Bob. Just, uh, just one more point yeah. to add as well. Sorry, yeah. guys. No uh, problem. Just for any anyone out there who actually thinks we can win the Asian Cup, <laughs> even if we do win it, we're not actually a better team, a better footballing yeah. team than Japan, South Korea, maybe Australia, and maybe a couple oh, more. Yeah, that's so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. definitely. So let, let's let's not kid ourselves. Even if we do win it, we, it'd be by luck. We won't be able to do it again. And uh, two years down the line, Japan will have a better team than us. South Korea will have a better team than us. And as I said, it'll be purely by luck. So, yeah, if we do win it, then absolutely fantastic. I'll be the first one to celebrate. And, yeah, why not? You know, we won the Asian Cup. But it doesn't really um, show any signs that our football is improving in that sense. So, yeah, I just wanted to put yeah, that out. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I agree, I agree. Thank you guys for coming on. As always, Bob, I can see now for being regular. I'm page one for the Asian Cup. I hope you come on too. And um, I really appreciate it. Um, so how did, how did I find you guys on Twitter or Facebook or whatever? I'm going to start off with you, Bob. Ek. Well, I'm on Twitter. That's where I am at most of the time blabbing on. Uh, it's at Bobak Goris. So, yeah, there's no spaces or anything like that. I also run a blog, which is not just the bottom line. You can find the address on my Twitter handle as well. Pejman? Uh, my account is Swedish, uh, and I almost uh, I write in Swedish. So it's in Swedish, Iransk Fotboll. And also uh, the webpage uh, that I uh, write articles for is called svenskafans.com. You can find the link on the Twitter. Sina? Yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Sina, that's uh, two A's, 
um, underscore XA. And if there's any questions or anything, then uh, yeah, please tweet me. I'll definitely post your information on the bio for if anybody wants to contact you or ask you questions. But I really appreciate you guys coming on, and it's always a pleasure. And hopefully, um, we'll see where Iran will end up. And I'm looking forward to uh, having a discussion before we play Bahrain um, the first week of January. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Pasha. You're welcome. Nice to be here.